500 episodes officially we here bro that's awesome i mean i'm a podcaster uh a little over two years we're right at about 450 or so episodes published give or take so absolutely man congratulations to you 500 that's a that's a great honor man most people don't make it to 10 here you are at 500 man fantastic work and I appreciate that. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Let, let, let's get right into the conversation because we have limited time here. You know, your experiences, the NFL, how did it shape your approach to leadership and business? You know, Rory, being in the National Football League, playing around some great guys, teammates, opponents, being coached by some of the best coaches, playing against some of the best coaches, I learned a lot around how to be a servant leader that always takes the bull by the horns, and doesn't wait for somebody to tell him what to do. Best advice I ever got was from Coach Jack Del Rio, and he said the following, in life, be your own CEO. As a matter of fact, Rory, anytime I give a talk, anytime, I always reference that. I don't talk much about my NFL career as far as games. That, that, I mean, that's something like a like a, a high school or like a sporting type of a talk. But it's business. I will only really talk for about maybe 30 to 60 seconds about the NFL. But every time I do it, right, Rory, I pull in Jack Del Rio at that same. Because it was my rookie season. He told to all of us, the entire draft class, undrafted, all of us rookies, right before we had our first OTA with the veterans. And what he was trying to tell us was is that the veterans are going to sometimes, you know, want you around, sometimes not. They may be very talkative. They may not be. But it's your job to show them, right, that you're here not because of what you did in the past, right? That's what got you here. But to stay here, you want to be that individual that's self-starting, that doesn't wait for coaches to tell you what to do, where to go, how to be. So to me, the NFL taught me a lot about that, which has helped me become an even better now businessman today. I love that you say that because there's so much great conversation there. You know what I mean? As far as just what you're speaking, you know, so polarizing. You know, I had David Tyree on the podcast about a year and a half ago. Totally you know what I mean? Of mine. Yeah. See, look at that. It's kind of ironic how everything plays into one, you know what I mean? And things like that. But let's even speak to even a little bit more adversity. How do you stay motivated and focused in the face of adversity? You know what, Rory? I do a lot of talks on this subject, which is very fortunate for our brand and I tell people, we try to teach people, become that individual that can become that person all the time, not just that can overcome adversity. And what I mean by that is when you're that individual who can become, who has become that person, whatever life throws at you, you're ready, no matter what. When you have to overcome, I feel, it's not bad, but you have to get charged up. You have to get realigned. You have to get movement. It takes time to do those things. And with what we're trying to teach, become that person. And you become that person by understanding this. The heart believes, the mind knows. The mind knows what to do. But until the heart believes it fully, it doesn't matter what you do. Or worse yet, you may do some things, right, Rory? But it's not going to be any type of substance, any type of sustainable, you know, foundational movement. Because you don't believe in it. You're just doing it, right? So 500 episodes, your heart believes in it, Rory, and your mind executes. Us at 450, our heart believes it. We execute speaking, coaching, all that. And I remember, Roy, when I started speaking 11 years ago almost, well, yeah, man, I didn't believe it. I did it. But that's why, right, Roy, no paid job for two and a half years because I was doing something without belief in it, which makes it because mm, I don't feel it. I'm not really going to work that hard towards it or I'll do things, right, Roy? But on the other side, which is even worse, nothing is going to actually move because it's just me wasting motion. 
and that's nowhere to be in life. No, no, well said, well said. You speak because it's so great because I'm the same way. When I was doing my coaching and I decided, yo, guys, what's going on? I appreciate you. Thank you. Turn on all bell notifications, subscribe, like, and comment to the podcast. It's the best way to stay up to date. And hey, it helps us gain the clarity and boost ourselves into that algorithm. We appreciate the support each and every day, each and every week. Let's keep on going to keep on growing. Peace. I got to still work. Got to make money, right? How am I going to give free information to the general public? And then you do it best on a podcast. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of folks will be like, well, Rory, you're doing all this free work on a podcast, but what's coming? I said, listen, just give it time. You know what I mean? We, we need to get out of that rat race. You see what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be here in the nine to five all the time, you know, much longer, but you know, time, time will end up speeding up. Speaks to core values. What's your biggest core value that you tell your clients and the people that follow you on social media? I tell people, make sure that your internal values are aligned with your external actions. I call it alignment around a unified vision. Or in sense, you want to have that core value of really being, having integrity, right? integrity, or you can call it character. The first thing that Aristotle taught Alexander the Great 3,000 plus years ago, in order to have your men follow you, Alexander, through a hard battle, they have to see your character. It's not about you and your legacy of becoming this great general and all this stuff. It's about you fighting for the real honor of Greece. Right. That's what the men have to believe. So if they don't believe that, it's never going to get you to a real good place of where you want to be. So that's what it really, really comes down to is that if you are really trying to move something, your character slash integrity has to be aligned from what you believe inside to what you do on the outside. And if people sense that, and believe that everything will come your way. If they doubt it and they're not sure of it, it's not going to end well. Like For example, right, Roy, we're getting a lot of speaking jobs now in the insurance space, a lot, because of my good friend, Mick Hunt, who's a great friend of mine, got us connected to a lot of his different great friends and associates and close buddies in that space. And now they're becoming our friends, our buddies, we've gone on their podcast, having them on ours. I've sent them out different, sometimes footballs, more, uh, you know, get authentic t-shirts, sometimes both, right, uh, Rory? What we're doing is just we're saying, hey, here's something to say thank you. Please, we, we are so grateful for your time, your friendship, you helping us. And again, right, Rory, we've already booked three big jobs for next year going into that space. And we haven't even started yet. And we have a huge job later this year in Vegas for uh, a big insurance company called Insure Tech Connect at the Mandalay Bay in October in Vegas. About 10,000 plus insurance people. We're going to be talking about our talk, the ego mistake from eight figures to 825 per hour, how to create an unbreakable mindset in uncertain times. First, we're going to do, guys, is, hey, I'm Marcus Ogden from Washington, D.C. I live in Fuquay, Bay, North Carolina, here to talk today about how to build an unbreakable mindset. And I'm going to tell everybody, you want to become, you want to, you want to be that individual that becomes that person that can get through anything. You don't want to just have to overcome consistently. It takes effort. It takes you recharging yourself. And sometimes, right, Rory, if you're trying to overcome and you don't have enough gas in the tank, if you don't have enough, you know, experience that you to get through and know how to deal with adversity or hardship, there's a chance you might fall. Just like I'm going to tell them, Rory, in that talk, just like when I met Ernie Shavers about five or six years ago, right, right, Rory, in that same hotel. I was me. I was at a signing in Vegas at the Manley Bay, and I met Ernie Shaves around 2017. Right, so it's, wow, looking at what's that four? I mean, three, yeah, oh, about seven years ago. And Ernie was talking about 
mindset. We were having a conversation. He said, Marcus, not having an unbreakable mindset cost me to lose to, you'll know this day very well, Rory, Muhammad Ali in 1975. We were fighting for the championship. I knocked him down twice. And my corner told me if I knock Ali down twice in the same round, he's never gotten up from that. He will stay down. He'll quit. You'll be the next heavyweight champion. And he followed his corner's instructions. He knocked Ali down twice. I think it was in the fifth round. But unfortunately for Ernie and his corner, Ali got up. And, and Ernie told me, right, Rory? When Ali got up, he said, Marcus, I knew I had lost the fight because I hit him with everything I had, and he still got up. And Ali, who was not a knockout artist, knocked Ernie out in the eighth round. But here's mm. the funny thing, right, Rory? And Ernie said if he would have known this, he would have won the fight. But he, was, he didn't know. Ali said in many interviews the hardest puncher that he ever faced was Ernie Shavers. Jesus. <laughs> Story time. So, Listen. So, so it, Ernie, Ernie, Ernie hit him and it almost broke Ali. But Ali, see again, Ali became, he became that person that overcame that adversity, right? He became the person that could withstand anything. He didn't have to get charged up. He didn't have to, because think, think about it, right? What if Ali was an overcomer, not a, had not become? He may have not have gotten up, right? But he was, he had become the person that was used to handling anything. And because of that, he got up and Ernie couldn't overcome the doubt in his mind. And three rounds later, he's knocked out. Facts. It speaks so much to even the story with the man, the myth, the legend, Mike Tyson against Buster Douglas. You see, Buster Douglas had all of that. You feel what I'm saying? You can see, you could say it's maybe a little bit of adversity, the loss of his mother. But he did say what he was going to say he was going to do. And look what happened. He beat Mike Tyson. He never what? gave up. He put all the chips down on himself. You know what he did, man? He was the first person to tune out the noise of the aura of Mike Tyson, the black shorts, the high, uh, the, uh, the high, you know, shoes with no socks, you know, the, the death defying stare look, right? I mean, he knew all that, but he didn't pay any attention to it, right? And Mike, unfortunately, he had built up such a phenomenal brand and he was a phenomenal fighter he just took Buster Douglas for granted. He did not prepare. And when you don't prepare, you are leaving yourself vulnerable to failure, right? Great quote by a great person. If you haven't failed, you haven't tried hard enough. Denzel Washington. And again, Mike Tyson had, had faced many failures in his life and overcame. And he, again, he had become the person that could withstand anything. But in this time, at this point, at this fight, Mike did not do what Mike Tyson always did. He didn't train hard. He didn't work hard. And as a result of that, he did not do well. It's just like us, right, man? I mean, Roy, myself, you know, I'm a speaker. You're only as good as your last talk, mm. right? That's the, I mean, we prepare. Every time we get a chance to do a job, virtual, in person, we're preparing. We get our PowerPoints done. We want the clients to review them, oversee them, approve them. Bam, bam, bam. I'm not saying, oh, well, we've worked for 60 plus Fortune 500 companies and we've done this. And that, that don't mean a daggone thing because now you're in a new opportunity. What are you going to do? Like, again, podcast, same thing. You can interview great on all these podcasts, right, Rory? If I come on yours stumbling, stammering, incoherent, not doing well, you're like, why do I bring this guy on? This is this was crazy. Who was this guy, right? You're only as good as your last job. Facts, facts, facts. Let me ask you this question. You know, your development, things like that. You're retired. Now you're doing the speaker. What would you tell your 15-year-old self now? 
where you're I at would, right now. I would tell my 15 year old self, please, Marcus, as you are having success later in life, don't develop an ego. And that Rory is what killed me. We had an eight figure construction company making close to $20 million in revenue, clearing seven figures. I had a beautiful home, different trucks, had all these things, worked hard, didn't really love it, but we were fulfilled. Well, I'm fulfilled. We were successful, right, in that regard. But my ego just took me down. It did, man. I tell everybody, what is the biggest silent killer of most people? By the time they realize that they have it, it's usually too late. It's your ego exaggerated, glorified opinions, or as one of my clients told me, and I love it for her selling this, her name is Marquita Woods, edging God out, right? How can you develop that ability to never ever put yourself in a position of having your ego get bigger than the good part of your soul? That's gratitude, right? We have a saying for turn the page, pain, adversity, Gratitude empowerment. Everybody's gone through some type of pain. Everybody's gone through some type of, you know, adversity. Most people, I feel, are gratitude-driven or grateful what they have. But where most people don't go to get to that next level where they want to go, they don't empower anybody. They don't. You know why? Empowering people puts you in a position for scrutiny. That's what happens, right? Right, 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 Rory? You have a 500 episode podcast. How many people out there that are doing podcasts or trying to or saying, man, I can't do this? I got to 11 or 12, I'm done, are saying, oh, well, Rory did, but like, what did he really do? Like, well, what, how'd he do it? You know, well, he probably got lucky. He probably got this, da 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 da. I'm like, who knows what people say, right? Right? Because again, to empower people, you have to be in a position of vulnerability to go out there and share your message. And a lot of people don't want that. A so lot true. of people are afraid of what they're going to say, going to find out, are going to do, right? Again, I don't care what political party you are with. Don't care. You're pro-Trump, you're pro-Kamala. Bless you, that's your opinion. But I will say this. I have the utmost respect for both of them because now they're opening up their lives to so much scrutiny on both sides. Why? People are looking for anything to tear them down, right? So again, right, Rory, to empower, you have to step onto the stage, right? Can you empower a few friends here or there? Sure. I call it more like uplifting. Empowering is like Les Brown. Tony Robbins, you know, John Maxwell, Oprah, you know, uh, yeah, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, all these phenomenal people, right? Like you are on a stage of trying to help the masses become becomers. And that is something a lot of people are just not willing to do. So true. So true. You know, before we get out of here, right? What I would want to ask you is, you played pro ball. Mm -hmm. Your brother played pro ball. Mm -hmm. What was that one big piece of advice he gave you before you stepped on that field? Close this oh. up, my brother. Oh, he told me, you better know the game before you step onto this field. And I, what he means is you better study every single day. And you know what, Rory? That kept me in the league for almost six years as a lineman. I could play all positions. I was I played a lot of tackle, guard, did it all. But I studied. I remember my rookie year, my rookie O-line coach, Paul Boudreaux, great guy. He saw me. It was like probably, I don't know, like June, late June, early July, campus in July. And I was just in there. You know, I had just got an apartment. I was living in Jacksonville. I was prepping for the upcoming training camp, trying to make the team, all this stuff. I was studying film of OTAs, what I had done, how I did well, what I did wrong. And I remember post Coach Boudreaux saying, Marcus, do you ever go home? I was like, no, Coach, I live here. He said, awesome response. Keep that mentality. You'll have a career in the NFL. Good job, Marcus. See you tomorrow. 
And that was truly uplifting because that's who I always was in high school, in college. I mean, I got one offer to play college football at Howard University. Like, oh, if I become a starter for a year or two, I'm going to go be an investment banker. This is grandma in college for free. I became a four-year starter. I got inducted to the Howard's Athletic Hall of Fame in 2022. My dad and I are the only father and son in their Athletic Hall of Fame in their 155-year history, right? And I, and I got there through outworking everybody else. If you're listening to this, if you want to become Rory, 500 awesome episodes in climbing, you want to speak on stage like me, become a best-selling author, become that person that overcomes everything continuously and without hesitation. You want to become that individual that can get through hardship, you know, adversity, bankruptcy, loss, all of that. Outwork everybody. It doesn't happen overnight. We've been speaking now for, what, 11 years, right? My good friend Mick wouldn't turn us on to all this type of potential insurance business and money and access. If we were just okay, we wouldn't be speaking for people, large sums of money, if we were just all right. You got to be the best. And to be the best, you have to outwork the rest. So true. Bravo. Well said, my man. I appreciate you for the 500 episodes. Plug all your information real quick, social media, where everybody can check you out. And uh, when are we going to see a speaking gig in uh, Toronto, Canada? Let's make it happen. Oh, man, I'm on it, dog. I got a couple things working. I should have a call today. So my about doing some work in Canada. So that's on the on the list. You can follow us on all the socials, Marcus Ogden's at Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok. But if you really want to get some access to us, Download our free app. If you have an iPhone or an Apple, go to your app store, type in Marcus Ogden. Boom, it pops right up. Follow us. It's a free app. We have exclusive content. You can then go to our podcast. You can go to our website. You can see what we're all about. Again, we are always trying to enlighten. We're trying to uh, enlighten, educate, and we're trying to always make sure that people are getting engaged with us. We want to engage people. We want to enlighten them. We want to educate them. And that's right at our website. And our website is www.marcus, M-A-R-Q-U-E-S, Ogden, O-G-D-E-N.com. Reach out to us. Connect with us. We'd love to hear from you. And again, Rory, 500 episodes. Bravo, sir. That's not easy. And you put the work in. And again, right? You, uh, you put the work in, right, to get the results out. As Les Brown says, garbage in, garbage stays. You, my friend, are putting in, bringing in excellence, and it stays. That's the difference, right? It's not garbage in, garbage out. It's garbage in, garbage stays, unless you have the mentality to outwork people and get it done. Do the work and outwork everybody else. Appreciate you, man. Thank you.